but the, the the reputation that you and 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 Jody have got is that you are both very good horsewomen, horsemen, horsewomen. Call it what you like. Um, and and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, well, you know, don't make a fuss about it. But the fact of the matter is that blindfolded, you could go around a horse and fix problems and and and, and get them to the level that you want them. Uh, it's a it's a special talent, isn't it? Well, I think it depends how interested you are in it. Um, I think every horse can be fixed if you try hard enough. I don't believe there's any horse that's perfect. Yes. Um, it depends which ailment you can live with and which you can't. And if you try hard enough, you can fix anything. Welcome to another edition of In The Box Seat. I'm flying solo today. My bushy head friend Andrew Harrison and co-host is stuck in the game reserve. I don't know why he doesn't just go and buy a property out there because he's there more than he is at Ashburton. So he's not with us today. He's on the way back trying to get past burst rivers and blocked roads and sinkholes. So get home safely, Andrew. We miss you and no doubt we'll enjoy being with you on the podcast next week. We're at a very special place in Drummond, just to wonder and I. How are you? How are you? Good, Good thank you. So you're flying solo today? 100% on your you. own. Me and you. Just, how does it go? Just the, the two, two of us. us. Jeez, thank goodness we uh, don't rely on singing for our, our, our income because we'd be out. Uh, we're at Presentor Place, and I always call it Presentor Palace because that's exactly what it is, a palace. But the official name is Presentor Place, owned by Jody and Sue Peters, mother and daughter exacta. And it gives me great pleasure to be in their home on this gorgeous property. And I'll start with the oldest of the two, if you don't mind, to welcome and greet uh, Sue Peters. Sue, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, Warren. I can do without the old part, if you don't mind. <laughs> and, 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 of course, uh, uh, Jody, um, your daughter. How are you, Jody? Very well, thank Good, you. Good, lovely. Nice to be here. Thank you for opening up your home and opening your farm to us. And uh, we look forward to finding out about uh, you and your mom and your family and uh, present talk place. Right, let's talk about uh, how everything started. That's my opening question always. And for you, Sue, I mean, take us all the way back. How did you hear about the equine? How did you hear about horses? How did you hear about all these wonderful things that you do? All the way back goes back a very long way. When I was growing up in the suburbs, the girl living next door had a horse and rode. Her name was Beryl Taylor. Okay. Uh, most people probably know as Beryl Tom. She married Tremaine Toms as her second marriage and ran Maritz Fontaine. And if the girl next door could ride, I saw no reason I shouldn't be able to ride. So I forced my parents to let me go to a riding school. And funnily enough, Beryl's son is a top show jumper in South Africa and also Jody's coach, Barry Taylor. Okay, she see him. That was uh, so. That was the start of equestrianism. Okay, and, and from then it's never stopped. The fascination's just always been there. But the, the the reputation that you and 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 Jody have got is that you are both very good horsewomen, horsemen, horsewomen. Call it what you like. Um, and and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, well, you know, don't make a fuss about it. But the fact of the matter is that. Blindfolded, you could go around a horse and fix problems and and, and, and get them to the level that you want them. Uh, it's a it's a special talent, isn't it? Well, I think it depends how interested you are in it. Um, I think every horse can be fixed if you try hard enough. I don't believe there's any horse that's perfect. Yes. Um, it depends which ailment you can live with and which you can't. And if you try hard enough, you can fix anything. Jody, um, recently married. Yes. Tell us quickly about your husband, Glenn, and, and what does he do, and how did you meet, and tell us a bit about that. So, my name is now Jody Ambrose, officially. Um, how did we meet? Actually, through the comrades. Okay. Um, long story, but I'll try to keep it short. He was doing a charity challenge. It was called the Trafinity Challenge. He was doing Kilimanjaro, doing the full Ironman, and running comrades. Sure. And I was involved in a triathlon squad with a lady who was doing the challenge with him and she was actually here on the couch and she said no her partner is so stupid he the last part of the challenge they'd done everything else he'd entered but hadn't paid for his entry and it's now two weeks to go and they're not letting him run 
and I'd qualified, but I got injured, I couldn't run, so I offered her my entry. Okay. Um, and we'd never met, but that was Jeez. how we did meet. Okay, yeah, he, um, he was going to take me out for dinner as a thank you for the entry. Okay, Jeez. well, that's a lovely story. That is an, uh, that's an excellent story. And, and what, is, what does Glenn do? What is his line of business? Um, he imports toys. Okay. Yeah, children's toys and bicycles, mountain bikes. Jeez, okay, that's very interesting. All right, and how's he adapted to, obviously, now that you're married, you're on the farm. Uh, he's enjoying farm life. I think so. It's a bit of a change from what he's used to, but um, he is involved in the horses. He's actually involved in our racing syndicate, okay. and um, he has learned to ride as well. Okay. He had a horse well, of his own. How can he not learn to ride? The two best trainers uh, that, that, that he could oh, possibly find. I couldn't find. teach him, though. I no. gave him one lesson, and I got fired quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I need to butt in here. Neither of us could teach him to ride. He was self-taught and taught by my head groom. <laughs> <laughs> he, t- he thought we were used to We put too much pressure on him. Oh, sure. He well, wanted to be told one thing at a time, not ten things. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the competitive streak. But, okay, so he's riding now, too. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. But what I'll do is, is, is I'll come back to you and find out um, you know what happens here at Presentor Place, and you can elaborate on that in a moment. But I want your mom to tell us the name Presentor Place. Firstly, what does it mean, and how did you get to that name? I bought a horse from Sid Laird, Alex Dad, called Presentor. I'd seen him from the balcony at Gravel, and he was just the most beautiful horse I'd ever seen. It was like a pregnancy. I had to wait nine months until he became available. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, and uh, my husband at the time, Mickey Lowe, had a broken leg. And I was instructed under no circumstances we were to take another horse. Needless to say, Presento arrived home. <laughs> and um, we didn't live here then. He came here with me. Um, he's buried here. And only when he was buried did the farm get a name, Presentor Place. Okay. Before that, the farm didn't have a name. Okay. And, and what is a Presentor? A Presentor, I had to look it up in an encyclopedia, is apparently the leader of singing in a church. Okay. Okay. And he, he, if I remember correctly, Alec will probably correct me, he was owned by um, uh, Beck and Jaffe, okay. or was a Joffy. I can't, I can't remember. remember. Yeah, I, 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 I but he was he was the top long distance horse of his generation. Sure, absolutely unreal. I guess that's a wonderful story. Talking about uh, horses being buried on farms, I had the privilege of being down at Arkansas the other day, down in the Cape, and I saw a Flaming Rocks grave site, and it's just the most amazing thing. That it's, it's beautiful under this beautiful tree, and you know the most peace and quiet, and and yeah, the, you know the, 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 these animals, even when they're not with us, they've always got a uh, got a place in our heart, you know. Um, Jody, let's talk about where is, for those that are watching, where is Presentor Place? I know exactly where it is. Um, and I see that, the, unfortunately, the rain seemed to have uh, caused a bit of a, a, a ruckus on the road there, which oh they're yeah. busy fixing. Chaos. Chaos. Uh, it's certainly uh, the rain. We, we want rain and we need rain. But my, oh my, looking at the newspapers, there's been a lot of rain um, and, and plays havoc to everything. But where is this beautiful farm? And, and tell us what you do here. Okay, so we're based in Drummond, um, Halfway Market Comrades, 15 minutes from Sommerfeld. Um, and what do we do here? We pre-train racehorses and spell them, obviously, too, and our show jumps. So, basically, that's, that's what happens. It. Okay, and then what about um, training methods? Uh, you know, when you, you pre-train, every pre-trainer has a different method. And what's, I don't want you to, I don't want you and mom to give away any secrets, but what is it you know why should somebody out there send their horse here what is it that you can offer them that you or you believe that you can offer them that maybe the others can't do you know what i hate the most is when people say oh no you break horses and i think that's the difference we've never ever broken a horse okay. uh, physically or mentally so how we do it is um a proven process i wouldn't say slow but a proven process that works that um keeps the horse physically and mentally strong um you make them physically strong enough for the next step always. Um, Mom, do you want to elaborate? <laughs> well, that's a big difference. There's breaking horses and there's backing horses. Okay. We back horses. Okay, okay. Sure, that's an interesting We way back and pre-train them. Okay, okay. That's um, anybody can break a horse in one day. Yes, sure, sure. Thick sand, large person, long enough, the horse is broken, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, tell me what... If you get a horse that maybe comes from, a, well, they come from the sales or come from farms, and you get one that's a little revved up, and um, uh, and I've seen you in action. I mean, obviously, it's it's calmness, quiet, go slowly, uh, open spaces, staff, 
Uh, we'll touch on your staff in a moment, but... You just keep repeating the process. So we've got a process that's, and it goes in two-day steps, in increments of two days. Okay. Um, and if the horse is not ready, you'll just start again. Okay. And you'll stay on whatever step until he's happy with it, or you'll try another method. Okay. We got a horse, I think probably two years ago. I was ill at the time. I think I might have actually been in hospital. That apparently only went in one direction. When it went in the other direction, it threw itself over backwards. Sure. I said to Jodie, oh, don't be stupid. I can't <laughs> possibly do that. Anyway, she arrived the next day and said it threw itself over backwards, fell out of the lunging ring and landed on the hill at the bottom of the stables. <laughs> <laughs> so we came up with a contraption that you, it could go in any direction it wanted uh, without the lunge ring getting caught up. Sure. I believe it was positively useless anyway, but it didn't <laughs> fall over backwards again. <laughs> yeah, you can certainly get the, you know, with horses and ability, I mean, there's, yeah, a, you can there's a way to back everything. You've just got to give it enough time and enough thought. Yeah. Try never to fight. Yeah, there's a way around the argument. You've just I, got to find it. I, I wish humans would, would, uh, would uh, develop that, uh, that you know, try not to fight, because fighting doesn't always fix everything. Well, I'm better with horses than humans. <laughs> so you have got um, racehorses, thoroughbreds, yeah? But you've also got... Um, Warm bloods is it? Warm bloods that you that you 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 are involved with. Tell us about that because also you're a show jumper of the highest order. Mm, that's um, I've definitely show jumped some thoroughbreds as well to the highest level. Okay. So my top junior horses were thoroughbreds. I got to the highest level in adults on thoroughbreds. So they've got a special place in my heart, and okay. I've still got some. Um, but yes, warm bloods. Um, they are bred specifically for show jumping. Um, I've ridden my whole life, both my mum and my dad actually competed professionally as well, both at South African level, so it was in the blood, and um, I think I peaked a little early in life. Um, you just had the right horse then. Yeah, so sort of 10 years ago I was at the peak number one in the country, since then I've been trying to get back there, but okay. um, yeah, we're still at it, I go to Joburg quite a lot for the big competitions that side. The horse that you you succeeded with, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is is Rafika Dor. Is that right? Yes. Is that the? Tell us about this gorgeous horse. So, um, Henning Pretorius, who now owns Summerhill Stud, gave him to me. It's the short story. But um, I tried to buy him as a four-year-old. He failed the vetting dismally in the first trot up, and kept asking Henning, "How's my horse? What's happening?" And eventually, he said, "Well, can't keep him sound. Do you want him?" Um, so I kept asking about him and he gave him to me and he arrived very unsound <laughs> and McVeigh helped me along um, and Robbie yeah Robbie Dawson was a farrier so between Robbie Dawson and McVeigh they um, wouldn't say it was ever a hundred percent sound but we patched him up and yeah he jumped to the highest level won me the South African Championships um, World Cup Qualifier Series and he was my best friend. His name, Rafika, is actually a Swahili word for my best friend. And he was my best friend. Jeez, can you believe that? Okay, that's... Uh, that's uh, you see, now, you, you were telling me earlier on, I mean, what stories people would... I mean, these are gold stories. I mean, we, we've only been going seven or eight minutes and we've already got some wonderful now stories. Now ask where she came up with her rock of bloodstock. Yes, well, that's uh, absolutely, because now... You, you, I'm glad well, you're seeing she told you the Swahili thing. The Swahili, because... A long time ago, you spoke to me about wanting to get some owners. I mean, it's such a challenge that we all have, and we will new carry on going absolutely to get these new people in. And you've tapped the industry of the show jumping. Uh, uh, maybe not all that are involved in Haraka Bloodstock are show jumping. But tell us about that. Haraka Bloodstock. We had You had your first runner, I think, just the other day. Yes. Short head second, wasn't it? Yeah, her name's Woman of Fame. That's and right. she was a very close second. It was very yeah, exciting. Yeah. So you just had the one runner, one. hey? Yeah, we've got two horses currently in training. Um, hopefully you get some more nationals. But um, yeah, the two horses, the one came second with Sean Terry currently. Um, so yeah, the whole idea is actually to support trainers that support us. Okay. And but more than that, I wanted to get new owners in the game. Like now I'm involved, all I keep hearing is we need more owners. How do we get new people in? So I thought, well, what do I have to offer? And I know a lot of people in horses through show jumping that maybe don't know about racing yes, or think yes. it's quite inaccessible, like it's something over there. Yes. Um, so it started as, when I said show jumpers in, we already have the love of horses, but obviously anyone, everyone is welcome, as long as you're fun and nice. <laughs> um, and, and the and name. Yeah, the um, name, Her Her Bloodstock, yeah. 
So it sounds a lot like Rafika and um, it's the Swahili connection as well. So Haraka is the Swahili word for fast. Okay. And um, obviously Haraka bloodstock, fast horses. Yes, the yes. Swahili yes. sound like Rafika. She's fantastic. And and your colours, tell us about your colours because those, are, how did you design, did you design them? Was it a group of you? Or? Um, I did design them. So it's lilac, navy and white. Um, lilac is my favourite colour, always has been. Uh, it was actually my wedding colours. Okay. And the navy, I suppose, I've always loved navy with horses, it's professional. Um, the presental place colours are navy. And the white, I suppose, show jumping, it's compulsory. You've got to have a white collar oh, and you okay. have to have white cuffs. Okay. So it had a bit of a show jumping look as She's well. Fantastic. So a lot of thought put into it, a lot of hard work. Yeah, try. <laughs> now, these two horses, just you're going to have to do the first one, you was called Lady of Fame. Um, woman, woman of Fame. Woman of Fame. Woman of Fame. And the other one, don't tell me its name yet. I just want to tell you a story. My wife, whom you know, who's, who does a lot of photography and work for, for a lot of people in the industry. We were in Johannesburg and we were at Sean Terry's where your two horses are stable and she did a lot of photographs. Um, and I had the privilege of seeing both horses. But the second one that hasn't run, Jordan, the yes. name's just come to mind. He is a stunning looking horse. They're both looking stunning, uh, stunning looking horses, but Jordan in particular is my favorite. So I try really, really hard not to phone Sean every single day to ask <laughs> how my horse is. <laughs> <laughs> I really do love him. Um, yeah, he's by Silvano out of a dynasty um, mare, so he's going to take a little longer and um, probably run as a three year old, maybe late two year old. Everything's going well so far, and um, yeah, he's just blossoming. Yeah. So I love it every time yeah. I go see him. Can't wait to see him again, uh, uh, Sue, because as I said, we were there. I think it was just before Christmas or just after Christmas. Time flies. You never can work out exactly. But I'd love to see him again because I'm sure he would have, as you say, blossomed and matured even more. And uh, It's exciting. Uh, the trouble is one has to wait. Yeah. And this is where you need people with patience. Correct. Where yeah. show jumpers, it should work. You know, in show jumpers, you're only back, you're only back warm bloods at three and a half. Okay. A lot of racehorses are finished by the First time they're yeah, three and yeah, a half. They're retired. That's a damn good point. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it, it, it's... Show jumpers are used to waiting for things to happen. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and but and he is going to take a bit of time. He, but we knew that when we bought him. Yeah. And we, you can, it's the same with any horse. You can but hope. Yeah. And a stupid question. They were both obviously bought, bought here mm. and uh, had their last yes, yeah. them. I was speaking to uh, Peter Blythe the other day. And his horse won that he had bred. And I watched him looking at the TV and, and, and sort of getting excited. And then I, I saw him congratulating the owners. And then the horse came and got led in. And there was the interview. And he, he just showed so much interest and so much love. And, I, and I, I thought to myself, wow, to be able to, you know, he probably uh, fold that, you know, that, that, that horse and, and brought it up and accepted took it to the sales. And now he's seeing it go past the line first. I thought, well, I must go and ask him. It's a stupid question because you're going to say, how does it feel? He's not going to say, well, it feels ghastly. He's going to say it feels wonderful. But I went up to him and I said, just tell me what's going through your mind, what's going through your body right now. And he says, you can't believe it. I mean, this particular part to bring it out of its uh, out of the mother, uh, rear it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, send it to the sales, get the sales money, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and come at what you said, it's just an indescribable feeling. And and the point where I'm, the, the way I'm going to is with these two horses now that you've had here from a young from young age, pre-training, I mean, it must also be just the most unbelievable feeling to see them competing, whether they win or lose, just mm -hmm. to see them competing. No, absolutely. I think um, a lot of people in racing see the horses as a commodity. And, yeah, um, yeah that's definitely not what Haraka Bloodstock or Presental Place is about. Um, they're all individuals, and you get to know them, and it's personal, and maybe I'm a little bit too soft, but... Um. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's not just that. We don't need to own them. We don't need to have a share of them. They're all our children. Yeah. Well, they're my children. Absolutely. I follow them all their racing careers, and if they have a career afterwards and I hear of them, I'm interested in that yeah, as well. Yeah. You I get as much pleasure out of seeing them win for someone else. Absolutely. Uh, oh, well, absolutely. I probably would be more pleasure because my bank manager would be happy if they were, <laughs> if they were winning for me. But, I mean... I. Sean has had a fantastic strike rate with the babies from last year. Yeah, yeah. And I get just as much pleasure watching them win. Yeah, absolutely. And who was your, you, you just, Mission Rocks, was your, uh, Was that your most recent winner? That was uh, mm, I think uh, Mission won, Rocks. Um, just the other day, yeah. Week, 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 was, week, yeah, but yeah, yeah so in the last 10 days, that was Duncan Howells, yeah. And so then Sean won with, from the August two-year-old sale. 
It was it called the Africa House? Stood there. Oh yes, the, the Africa side. House, lovely yeah, horse. Yeah, that was from the Quick, August year old. Quickened up nicely. That's yeah. right. Quickened up nicely. Remember that race. So I mean, that's hardly been in in training. Let's talk about clients. Now you've had clients over the years that have supported you because any good business needs good clients. Um, you've been blessed. Uh, you were chatting off air that you've had some good clients along the way, some had good support. Fan- had fantastic clients. But Sue, you run a tight ship, you and your daughter, um, everybody in the industry when you say we're going to Sue Peters, no, no nonsense person, uh, s- straight down the line, that's how you run your business, that's how you do it, and that's, I think, the main reason for your success. Well, unfortunately, my PR is non-existent, Jody's is very good, <laughs> <laughs> so the changeovers there has worked very well. And, and the, the two of you, I mean, what a lovely combination to, to be able to both live here, you with your husband, obviously, and, and to be on this beautiful farm and run your business and just do what you do most, uh, that you love most. I mean, that you and mom, uh, what a combination. Mm, definitely. Um, yeah, we do get to do what we love. We're outdoors. And um, sometimes people say, oh, isn't it wonderful? It's like 40 degrees heat and I've been out riding all day. And I'm like, oh, I'd love your office job with an air con right now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, most of the time, 90% of the time, it's very special. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about a couple of horses that I mean, you've had champions rest here yeah? because also you do you do a bit of re- you know if a horse was, uh, wants to come and, and rest tell us about a few of the horses that have been here that, that you've that have gone to the top well, do you want to talk about the ones from well the horse that m- the m- I think the horse that made me the most nervous in the last 38 years was Comedy Ding okay it was Comedy Ding S- here obviously specifically yeah. because he came here after he'd campaigned in Gauteng and he came here to be freshened up for his Natal season. Yes. Usually we get them after they've had the season. And you know what? I know what it's like when you've only got one good horse, one really superstar. And you may, it was a horse of a lifetime. You may never get another one like that. Yes, yes. So you didn't check the door was closed once. You checked it was closed 16 times. <laughs> and he was an absolute gentleman and probably the nicest message of thanks I've well, the message went to Jodie and she relayed it to me, ever, was from Michelle Rex when she got comedy ding in after his two weeks here on the farm. Sure, okay. Um, so, oh, we've had fantastic horses. Um, Joey Soma's wonderful horse. Got the green light? Yes, yes. Um, he said, would I mind having him? I said, I'd be absolutely honoured to have him. Sure. He just said, please don't tell him what, how bad his confirmation is, because <laughs> he doesn't know. And he also was a gentleman. I mean, Sean sent... Rain in Holland, um, Nebras. Sure. Uh, so uh, Cyrilla was here as Cyrilla was actually back here. Okay. Johan Janse van Furen has sent us some amazing horses. Second base. Second base was here. Um, but even back in the day, you said you backed Vers and Getrix? Backed Vers and Getrix. Sure. Very, did very little work for Mike de Kock. I can't remember why that year he had too many horses and he sent me 17. Um, been going a long time. I've been on this farm 38 years now. Sure, it's a long time. I yeah. think this might be a 39, but I'm not too sure. As yeah. you said, I'm old. <laughs> I laughed the other day. <laughs> I was doing an interview, shame, uh, and I asked one of the jockeys because there was, a, I forget the gentleman's name, and I won't mention the gentleman's name because I don't want to get into trouble again. But I said to the guy, to the young rider, I said, it must be, and he was a man of the turf. I mean, he's, he, the other guy's about 89. And uh, I said, it must be such an honor for you to ride a. A, a winner for a respected elderly gentleman of the turf, you know, and, uh, which is, anyway, of course, I got hauled all over the coals. You know, how can you call him an elderly gentleman? I said, well, you know, the man's not 21. Yes. You know, he's been <laughs> in the okay. game for, it's a fact, and I was respectful. I said, an elderly gentleman of the turf, you know, so please, I promise you, I said it with greatest but respect. If you call me a lady, you're lying, sir. So <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and, and talk about the sales, um, uh, Jody, because uh, recently you've been active at the sales not only for your bloodstock company but also for um your farm uh, you know you want to get out there and, and tell the people you know who you are where you are and has it been good for you been successful um yeah i actually love it i think it's my favorite part um i've just loved get, getting to know everyone and so i don't really think it's work as such i suppose it is pr and networking but um i've genuinely enjoyed getting to know everyone okay um, yeah, everyone's warned me about the racing crowd. I think it's a lovely bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to speak to you about your animals because you come to this farm, there's dogs everywhere. Um, I'm just looking um, to wonder maybe you can take a cutaway of that uh, beautiful, beautiful dog 
uh, lying on the couch. And, and if you love My horses, child. if you love horses, you've got to love all animals as far as I'm concerned. Tell us about that gorgeous dog lying on your couch. That's my mum's story. <laughs> Twinks. Well, it's actually Jodie's story. I'd, I'd been in England visiting my grandchildren and I'd seen a gentleman walking on Wimbledon Common with what I thought was a beautiful dog and asked him what it was. And it was a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. So when I got home, I told Jodie and Glenn this is what I wanted, having never liked small dogs. <laughs> anyway, couldn't buy one. It, they were horribly expensive and a very long wait. Yes. And then Jodie saw on Facebook, what's her name, Lizanne Forbes, was going overseas and she had adopted this dog okay. who was a runaway and she wanted to rehome. And she is a runaway and she is the love of my life. I don't know how I managed to live without her. She's got a character. Twinks had to come to my wedding. Twinks came to the wedding. Okay. okay. She stayed in the hotel <laughs> and came to the wedding. She, everybody else had a partner, but she was my plus one. <laughs> plus one. <laughs> Jody, tell me about the staff at uh, Presentor Place. Um, they've been obviously with you for a long time. Good horsemen and horsewomen. Talk to us about your staff. Um, yeah, we've got our core staff, some of which I think Alfred's maybe been here longer than I've been alive. Yeah, <laughs> longer than I've been alive. <laughs> and um, like our head groom now, Alta, he's been with me since I was on ponies, so we kind of grown up together. Um, yeah, the relationship sometimes gets a little bit messy with friends often. Um, yeah, he tells me exactly what it is when I don't do well in a show jumping around. He'll <laughs> tell me straight, which isn't always fantastic. <laughs> but um, yeah, a team have been with us a long time. Um, we've got a team who knows what they're doing. It's a good relationship. Um, I trust them. I think they quite like us. So um, <laughs> It works. Yeah, she's, I tell you. And how many horses can you take at, at your maximum? Uh, or how many stables have you got? What's your maximum? We can take probably up to about 65, 70 horses. Okay. okay. But then we're pushing it. That means Jody show jumpers have gone to the neighbors. Okay. <laughs> which happens. We, like last year when we were very full. Okay. We had very good support of um, spelling horses. You know, Cape Town horses couldn't go back. So we had fantastic support from the top Cape trainer. Um... And then our um, Sean and Johan and various other top people. So we really ran out of space quite badly. So we just farm out our own horses. Okay. I've luckily got a very nice neighbour who's prepared to put her older horses in paddocks to put my show jumpers in her stables. So um, it's stressful being that busy. It's stressful having that quality of horse in the yard, yes. but. I think we're very privileged to have the lifestyle we have. Yeah, but I also and the horses we have and the people we work with. Yeah, I think uh, again, you know, it's a testament to both of you that you know the top trainers like Terry and, and all the others that support you with, as you say, these top horses and have supported you. It's a testament to both of you because uh, you know if they were nervous to send them here and they were questioning your sort of ability to look after a horse, we all know accidents can happen. Um, yeah. So it's a feather in both of your caps, really. I think it is. When uh, Michael Azzi had his very good owner, I had, I can't tell you how many horses for Michael. And then he had a, a lot coming in from um, Australia. I said, you have to take some in. I've got nowhere to put them. <laughs> um, but I loved working for Michael Azzi. Um We spoke the same language. I must say, of, of all the trainers I've worked with, he definitely is near the top of the list of people I can talk to yeah. because we talk the same language when it comes to horses. You were also telling me, Sue, that uh, back in the day, your Sid Laird was, I mean, you could go oh, on I and tell I love Sid Laird. Sid could go back generations. He forgot nothing. He told me, and I'm sure it's open to correction. Sorry, Alec. He told me he'd been a millionaire several times and lost it all several times as well. He could bet on to which raindrop would come down the window pane faster. <laughs> uh, but to me, he was the ultimate horseman because he was old school. He trained on what he saw. I thought he was fantastic. Jody, with to, to have all this knowledge and, and information, I mean, to be able to... And I say from the older generation, I say it with respect again. No problem, um, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to tap on mom's knowledge and, and mom's friends and, and, and there's still, you know, many trainers and breeders that are 
from the old days that are around it must be but especially with mom it must be when you've got an issue or you've got a concern to be able to have her knowledge there too definitely um mom has slowed down of late but she's always there if i need her um please come look at this what do you think about this it's a sounding board um my dad obviously who is a trainer top trainer is also just a phone call away so between the two of them and the privilege of knowing others in the industry um yeah i'm very lucky i'm not starting off as a newbie um, I suppose that generational yes. knowledge yes. does help. Jamie, you would have obviously heard about uh, Dennis Dreyer retiring. Um, and I think he has no idea how bored he's going to be. <laughs> Shame, yeah, he's, uh, you know, I interviewed I've known Stuart. Dennis forever. I can, I can imagine, and I mentioned to Stuart yesterday, is that I'm sure they'll still own, you know, well, you can never get out the game. I'm, I'm sure no, he'll, he'll keep an interest, and I'm sure he'll be at the stables quite frequently, yeah, telling yeah. the guy what to do as well. Yeah, it's just... Because uh, the boredom will get him big get time. Him, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, because... Uh, a great horseman. I mean, uh, Dennis. I'm sure. Yeah, he's he's uh, he was he's 77. Dennis and retiring at 77, and just a great horseman. So, on behalf of everybody at the podcast uh, and, and Gold Circle, we certainly wish Dennis and Jill, as I did in one of the interviews yesterday, all the very best. Um, we share a common friend, or shared a common friend, uh, talking about knowledge and information. Uh, sa- a sad loss to the industry, uh, Charles Baker. But you were just telling me that the man is was a, in your opinion, the most knowledgeable, walking dictionary and walking encyclopedia. I thought he was a walking encyclopedia on the South African thoroughbred, not just yeah. the South African thoroughbred, but particularly South African thoroughbreds. Yeah. And um, within the last few months, I'd said to him, you know, we don't follow the bloodlines anymore as to yes. what lines jump, are producing jumpers. And he said, oh, well, there's only one. I was looking at it recently, and it's Willow Magic. Okay. And I was relating the story to Sean. He says, well, you know where to come and get those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Charles had dedicated his life, and it was his passion, Yeah. to the thoroughbred, right, yeah. uh, ra- whether it be racing or jumping. jumping. He enjoyed both, because I mean, he obviously owned... Uh, you, you pre-trained that horse of his, yeah, too. What was its name? No, I didn't, pre-tra- no, I didn't pre-train it, um, but it came here for a spell. It was sore, Okay. and we did... A fair bit of work on it. Um, and Charles's colours? Oh, yes, of course, those were uh, the past more. Really. Charles, uh, that was one of the most exciting things of his life when they allowed him to use Reggie Passmore's colours. That's right, yeah. Because yeah. that's how he got involved in horses, was walking to school. He had to walk past Clarewood. Okay. And he used to sneak in and spend, I think, most of the school time <laughs> instead of going to school with Reggie Passmore. <laughs> and that was the beginning of his obsession with horses. Yeah, and as you, that's a good word, obsession, because he was obsessed. We all. You know, everyone obsessed at different levels, but uh, we're all obsessed with the therapy. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, you know, you can have a tough day at the races. You can go and you can, I mean, uh, you have a few bets or you can own horses and they run badly, but you just keep going back. It's, 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 a, it's a drug, isn't it? It's an addiction, and, but it's, we love it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, you can't explain it. Yeah, you can't, absolutely can't explain it. Um, I always uh, like to ask uh, in the closing stages of our discussion, uh, as I kick your chair away here, and there's a dog that I'm standing <laughs> on. Um, do you, do you ladies have time for any hobbies? But I mean, this is your life. This is your hobby. It's your interest. It's your job. It's your passion. But anything else? Do you, I mean, I, I know you do show jumping. I'll start with you, uh, Jody. Anything else? Any, anything? In um, I think I've got too many hobbies. It's hard to do any of them properly. Um, anything outdoors, adventurous. Okay. Scuba diving, um, hiking, yeah. running, or cycling. Mm. Uh, um, so out, outdoors, eh? Yeah, you just come back from overseas. Yeah. Where did you go? I, do, I remember I've seen all your social media posts, but I've forgotten. Where did you go? So um, we went skiing. Uh, okay. I don't know if that's a hobby, but um, we went skiing in Solden in Austria. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. It was very fun, uh, Obviously icy cold. Yeah. And come home to um, it was sweating. It's like a 40 degree temperature change. Sure. Um, but yeah, Glenn had to go to Germany for some work, so I just met him there and we did a little trip okay. afterwards. Uh, excellent. Fantastic. Okay. Sue, anything? Uh, Me? Yeah. Our garden. Okay. You're, uh, well, you can see that. Absolutely. And, and uh, yeah, the garden. Um, horses and garden keep me sane. Maybe you can help me because I, I was a bit of a gardener, but I... Uh, not many people say you're a gardener, but uh, I do quite like gardening. My wife, whom you both know very well, uh, has no interest in the garden at all. Uh, she's <laughs> Sounds she's like Jodie. She <laughs> says to me, Mom, what am I going to do when you're dead? <laughs> I said, I'll teach the I gardener. I actually did say that. On the Those are exact words. 
<laughs> so she's now doesn't fancy. She loves the garden. She comes out and says, "Oh, when she's having a gin and tonic, look at the garden." It. Yeah, I love no, looking at the garden, but don't ask. Do Correct. <laughs> so I, I do the garden, and we've got a hell of a nice guy in our complex that that assists with it. He's brilliant. Anyway, he's actually coming on Saturday. We're going to do some gardening together on Saturday. But I decided I wanted to convert. We've got a small garden. We're in a complex. That the one line I wanted to put rose bushes in, Perfect. which I did. Ten rose bushes, beautiful. And my uncle, who farms up in New Hanover, where we're actually going after this meeting, um, he said to me, no, no, not easy to grow, just be careful, don't overwater them, blah, blah, blah. Well, so far, the ten have now become eight, two oh, are dead. No. So, I don't know what I did, maybe. But also, to them, we've had floods in Durban, so maybe it's just too much yeah, water. They, they don't like having wet feet, and if you, they plant it against a wall, they might be getting too hot as well. Well, that's exactly Ro- where I planted Roses are tricky, okay. but that's my passion. Okay, oh, right, okay. So, not, okay, so how's my form? Uh, I've planted the ten It bushes, happens. I uh, lose them wet too. Wet floor and uh, next to a wall, okay. Or ants have got the roots or whatever. Okay. So, lay roses off on are, I have back roses off on the water. Roses are tricky, but back off on the water. Okay, I'll show you a picture just now of the one that I did manage to keep going. It's magnificent. And there I was thought another you said one. eight kept going, not no, one. No, eight, uh, so no, uh, eight kept going, two down, but the, the, the one bush that's going of the eight, uh, I'll show you a picture, a beautiful rose. But also another one, a cousin of mine gave me, it's called a Duffolka rose, is it? A Duff, yeah. So that's it. So I'm learning about gardening, but I just need to learn how to not kill uh, these, <laughs> these roses. Um, and talk they, about they're heat. meant for England yeah. or Harrisworth. They're not meant for Natal. Yeah, yeah, also true. Um, if I had to say to you, we're all going out for supper. Where are we going? What do you like to eat? Jeez, that's tough. Seafood. Seafood. Okay, okay. And you, uh, uh, Sue? I'd say I'm not coming. I can't see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's exactly what I'd say. And um, this beautiful farm. When you wake up in the morning or, or you go to bed at night, what do you think to yourself when you look at your, this around you? Barring that I saw on the hill, which we won't go because... Uh, we, do, we refuse to look that way. Yeah, besides that huge warehouse that's built there. But what, what do you think to yourself or what do you say when you look at this gorgeous place? How lucky I am. Yeah, absolutely. Thank God I bought it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Obviously the same same. Oh, the one thing there. I haven't told you. Yes. Is this was originally Paul Gatsby's. Okay, okay. Ja- just and Glenn just Cotson occurred to me. often tells me he was here building trees or planting trees. Glenn Cotson worked for your dad. Okay. At one stage of planting. Oh, I think it was your dad. No, Nathan worked for your dad. Glenn, I think, worked for Paul. Okay. But the Cotsons were very involved in the starting of the farm and the planting trees and putting up fences. Sure. I think it was Nathan who helped your dad with fencing, and I think Glenn helped Paul. Okay. Did um, the... But your business is, is it correct to say, a bit seasonal? Mm. Obviously busy when there's sales, not sales after. So there are times in the year when things slack off a bit. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. So this would be a slow period at the moment. Um, It's really busy, I'd say, after nationals coincides with the Natal season as well and KZN sales. That's our busiest time of year. But but if I can say, it also does give the farm time to recover. Sure. At the end of the season and you've had 75 (laughs) horses, you know, the grass is taking strain. Sure. Now we can't cut it fast enough. We have tractors, brush cutters and lawnmowers going 24-7. But um, it does give the farm a chance to recover, give Jody a chance to go show jumping. Um, And I go gardening. (laughs) You can see by the gods. Well, ladies, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, but just to, we have, we just scratched the surface really, but to hear about Presentor Place and to hear about the both of you and, and your interest and your love, and just to let everybody know about your beautiful spot, um, yeah, I mean, we could go on for five hours, but I know your mom would not be happy with that. She's. Uh no, I'm allowed to say, can I do the smoke break? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're very privileged to work for the owners we work for and the trainers we work for. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big, in big, big, big a team. A wonderful effort, part yeah. piece of the world. Yeah. Breeding, you've never dabbled in breeding. Oh, I took two horses, two warm bloods. Yes. When they were, I think, 11 months old. As I, well, I can't think of the correct word. What, what was the word? I'd loan money to someone and I'd taken the horses as collateral. As collateral. Collateral, collateral, yeah, yeah. And you couldn't repay even with extensions of time and I took the horses. But the horses were born here on the farm. Okay. They were actually born here. Okay. But I want to tell you, waiting that three years, no, not ever again. <laughs> I want to see what, that, what they look like when they finish yes, growing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because they change so much and it takes so much time. Now I could never be a breeder. Yeah. Um, my hat's off to them. 
it's, it's, I think it's, it's a very special, the same as this. I think it's a specialized industry. You need to know what you're doing. Absolutely. You know, everybody absolutely. thinks they can back and pre-train horses. Well, good for them. Yeah, absolutely. You've got I happen exactly. to think we're the best at it. Yeah. No, well, the record's you can cut that out so. if you need to. <laughs> Not at all. It's, it's, uh, we're interviewing you. You're most welcome to it. It's, it's, it's the results. The stats speak for themselves. Are you going to try and go? Last question uh, to Joburg when this horse runs next time. Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay. I will be there. So the Do last you, were you there for the debut? We drove up to okay. the Val okay. just for the day. Okay, so that was so <laughs> close. I was shouting in the office oh. and, uh, was, uh, you know, I knew the history and I knew the horse and, yeah, yeah. it was oh so close. But, yeah. wow, it was exciting. And, and they were three lengths clear, I think, of the horse. Uh, that correct, yeah, mm. yeah. So that's... Uh, no. But she was brave because at one stage I thought, ooh, she's gone. Yeah. She's going to run fifth or sixth. Yeah. And she fought back. Did, yeah. Super race. So you're in the car with uh, your husband and whoever else goes, and off you go. My mum came that time. Uh, okay. Husband had to work, so yeah, my mum's smoking in the car. For five hours. <laughs> well, Let's talk about the smoking because <laughs> I'm an ex-smoker and I have nothing against smokers oh. and nothing. And I know you don't. You're just having a laugh. But no, she does. <laughs> does she? She moans. Does she give you the a hard time? way there and the entire way home. And the reason we went in the car was that neither of us had current driver's licenses, so we couldn't fly to Joburg and hire a car. We had to drive. Uh, so you drove to Joburg without a license? Yeah, I don't know if that should be that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, well, maybe cut that maybe part Maybe cut out. that part. I don't know if the South African police watch our show, but uh, nevertheless, uh, <laughs> we laughed. We laughed because... Uh, um, yeah, it's it's. And you got a ticket. But you know, sometimes you know. Well, that's right. They didn't notice if you got a ticket. Was it a flash ticket or a pull no. you over? Pull you over ticket. Jody comes to way down nice from eight hundred rand to two hundred yeah, or something. Yeah, he was a very nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, if he didn't notice that your license was expired, then no. Oh, he noticed. Oh, did he notice? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, the thing is, is that you know, sometimes with the discs on the car, and they expire. You know, how often do you check your discs on the car? How often do you check? My license could be expired two months ago. I don't know when it expired. But anyway, you'll be up. So mom is smoking in the car. But it just shows you, mom, all moms. What moms want, moms get, eh? Mm-hmm. So, okay, smoking and no smoking. So you moaned all the way to okay. Joby. <laughs> the only good thing is back. I unfortunately smoke. My parents didn't mind. I wish they had minded. But I made very sure neither of my three, none of my three children smoked. Smoked, yeah, yeah. And I miss it. I tell you, I got nothing. We were staying in Joburg recently. We went all the way to Joburg for the sales, and unfortunately to attend a funeral. Um, and the funeral was um, really a joyous occasion, which was so great for our good friend that passed away. But we waited for the races, and of course it was rained out. And we stayed with a chap that was a smoker. And yeah, I got nothing against it. It is what it is. But as you say, uh, uh, it's your car, and you don't want smoke in your car. So there we go. But uh, my car. Yeah. <laughs> but um, ladies, it's been absolutely excellent to just sit and chat and find mm-hmm. out about, as I say, your business and about this beautiful place and this gem in Drummond. And thank you, as I say, to everybody for your interest in the, in the thoroughbred and in, in show jumping and in warm bloods and all that goes with it. And yeah, just for working with horses because ultimately you are the ones that hand the horses over to the trainers that make their jobs easier and in turn makes it easier for the owners. Uh, thank you and well done and just keep going and keep doing what you love most. To both of you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's been a no, pleasure. It's been fantastic. And next time we come, we'll stay and uh, we'll have a, a gin and tonic or we'll and have bring something. Your wife. We will certainly do that. So we certainly will. But thank you and all the very best. Thank you. That's thank uh, you a so wrap much. from uh, the two of us, the uh, three of us rather. As I say, Andrew's not here. And uh, get home safely, Andrew, from the the Kruger National Park. There's plenty of racing action. We race at Hollywood Bet Scottsville on Sunday. And uh, just plenty of racing action around the country. There's been a few abandoned race meetings in Gauteng due to the weather. And uh, we'll uh, get things back on song very soon. From Warren Lenferner to Wanda Taravinga, who's flying solo today. The Peters family and, uh, of course, everybody at Presenter Place. Travel safe, be kind, and we'll see you, as always, in the number one box. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. And we hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.